Well, we're getting back to showing some of the GSL Model Car Championship. Boy, we have a lot to cover. Oh boy, we've been going in so many directions and we've got so many different things and we kind of got away from covering the GSL and we're back to covering the GSL. <laughs> This was sure a fun event, especially this time. It was just, there were so many cars. The biggest one. Right. Of course, the last one. Of ever, course, so, but yeah. Uh, I guess that, but it hadn't been held in several years and the turnout was just massive. This has always been put on by Mark Gustafson and his close friends, and they've just been doing it for so many years now, something like almost 50 years or oh, something. Oh, well, there you go. There there's it the, is. There's the class picture. There's, and that's one of the early, that's not the first year, and that's Ed Roth there in the middle. Better known as Big Daddy Roth, or uh, the father of Rat Fink. Yeah, quite the legend, and he showed up that one year. Oh, that's so cool. It was so much fun. And then at the far right over here, oh, let's call them the, the Three Amigos. Oh. This here, this is Mark Gustafson, the, oh. the creator of the event. <laughs> <laughs> and kneeling in front of the whole thing here is Jim Keeler. Oh, he doesn't change, though. I'd recognize him anywhere. Yeah, he's a a legend in uh, automotive modeling just he's been involved in it since the mid 1960s professionally right and then of course there's this character standing here oh my goodness yes yeah i, I imagine you recognize oh that. i recognize that character right off the bat when i look in the mirror that's what i see looking back i know i've changed a bit but that's still the image that i see looking back in the mirror Absolutely. same hair color and everything <laughs> And here's Jim Keeler at the event. And Mark Gustafson. Well, there they are. Well, yeah, you could say they've changed a little. Oh, just a little bit. No, Jim, I'd still recognize still, him. I'd recognize <laughs> both of them. <laughs> and this is uh, uh, one of Jim's models from, I think, 1966. And it really helped put him on the map. It was uh, the Yellow Fever. And this is a production version of it. Oh my goodness. Because he got the job uh, for Ravel Models to develop a lot of what he was building in high school into production models. Quite a story. Uh, oh, it's an amazing story. Yeah. And, and here's a link to that story because it's, uh, it's a story worth telling. Right. Anyway, he's been working with Mark here to restore the original car for Mark's museum. Uh, the Model Car Museum, which is also in Salt Lake City. And uh, they've had it on display there, but they want to do a little more restoration work on essentially the prototype here. Right. Jim, we need shirts. Yes, how come we didn't get one? Yeah, this guy was wearing <laughs> Jim. This is uh, Jim's new line of models, Keeler's Customs. And oh, they're amazing. The shirts or the models are both. <laughs> both. Now, this is a very interesting model of a land speed record car built by Terry Jesse. Uh, Terry Jesse's also been part of the event for almost as long as there's been an event. But he's built uh, several of these land speed record cars, and two of them were on display over here with uh, Jim Keeler's model. Right. I mean, they're like airplanes without wings. Yeah, because it's, uh, it's the spirit of America. Yeah. Craig Breed loves spirit of America, and that is what Jim has modeled. And he's been involved with the Craig Breed love and these cars forever. Oh, yeah. And so he had always wanted to model the one in the back there, the Sonic One. Oh. The second of the Spirit of America cars and the first car to ever travel over 600 miles per hour. Good grief. So after thinking about this model for something like 50 years, Jim has actually scratch built the Sonic One. Amazing. First of all, <laughs> You want to look down there, and you can see the engine. Do you see the engine? I see the engine. Cool. <laughs> and so, tell us how you built this baby. This was built out of a material called Renshade. It's an industrial model-making material that is uh, 
really easy to shape. Uh, but it's a lot of work to get a good finish on it. And this is, I had to do three complete paint jobs because I had three major problems along the way. And it took me so long, but you see the rear engine, it's a J79 jet engine. And this is one piece of styrene all cut and then put on a ring. And if you look inside, you can see the engine parts and the tailpipe. And then these are the parachutes here. And they were made out of scopa mold or some kind of crafty material. And they had flame-proof cables on them. These are the canards that helped keep the, the car on the ground. And the cockpit, of course, is up here. And I, and that's a toothpick for the pedo tube. So, and I had decals ordered, but they didn't get here. So the car is being shown as it, just before it went into the paint shop to get its lettering. Uh -huh. <laughs> and then this guy is there to show you the scale. And this thing is, this is the empty space that's in there. This is the air, a side view of the air intake for the car. And it's circular at the back because it fits against the engine. And the engine is one and a half inches scale thickness. So I took a piece of wrench shape and I carved this shape and I have all these photographs uh, that, that where you can see all the contours and shapes. Plus I have all the dimensions and close up pictures. So this was really accurate got knocked the edge off and I made a mold of this a top and a bottom mold and then I take dental plastic and put that on the inside of that mold and when I'm done I have two pieces and I have to join them together with Bondo again and that's uh, you can stick your finger in there and feel that I've sanded it down to you know 600 or something like that so wind shape what exactly is it? Wrench shape is an industrial model making material that is used for uh, making prototypes with machines, with uh, lathes and milling machines. And it's this piece of wrench shape alone was $100. It's very, very expensive. To buy a piece about that big with three inches thick is $2,500. But it shapes and forms so easy. And then what I did is I put fiberglass right down here like this. And then I used those with uh, contour sheets made out of styrene to make this curve so it's exact. <laughs> the vertical stabilizer, which they have the car, this was made out of wood. I love working in wood and you feel it in this very It's just incredible. After I sand it to shape, sand the seal on it, I sand that, then I put primer on it, sand the primer down to 600 yeah, or 1,000, and then I put body to body. And the tires on the model are, I took uh, one, two front tires out of a 16 scale funny car kit, and I cut just that much of the tire off for the front tires. Then the back ones, I took the tires and I put them in uh, a clamp so they were oval because they were a bigger radius and they sat in the sun for a couple of days in the clamp until they settled into that shape and then I cut them off and laid those in and then I, I painted part of the wheel that you can see on there and this little shape here is fun because the air, air came around like this into the back of the car it's extremely aerodynamic, and uh, and I did hundreds of dimensions off the car. And what I did is I built a stick sticking up, and, and it was uh, five feet high, and it had quarter-inch holes drilled in it, every one inch. And then I had essentially what looked like a long pencil piece of diameter of wood with a point on it, and I would put it on here and, and get that dimension. And here, and here, and here, all the way down. And they were turned into, into these sheets, 
uh, showing the body contours. And so each one of these lines is like panel number three, and this is panel number two. So they locate all the various pieces on the car. Uh, and there are literally hundreds of dimensions. This is just one shoot. And then these I made to, when I did the carving on the car, I used these lines to make all of those shapes so it's accurate. And then I used a material called Evercoat Glazing Putty to form all of the curved sections on it. And I applied it by hand with my finger, just rubbing it on. And then I'd start out with 220 sandpaper, and then I'd go to uh, 180, and then I'd go to, to uh, 220. And then from there, I'd go up to 320, and then 400, then 600 sandpaper all the way up on the, on the wren shape, or on the uh, bondo part. And then when I got it up to 600, uh, and then I'd do 1,000, and then I'd put the first paint on, the primer. The primer would go on, and I'd sand that uh, smooth again, and then I'd do the first coat of blue, second, third coat, usually. And then this, these pictures that are down here, this picture was taken from a helicopter, and the crew invited me out to go out and watch the car run. It was at the time I was shooting for magazines. So that's me standing out there on the salt photographing this. And then we got in the crew car, which is over here, and we followed the car down. And on the third mile, they announced that the car was on fire. Okay, and so the driver of the crew car, I was sitting in the right rear seat, <laughs> and the driver turned around, and he's 120 miles an hour following the car, and turns and said, who's got the fire extinguisher? Who's sitting next to it? And I said, I am. He says, you know how to use it? I said, yes. So he says, well, good. You're going to put the fire out in the car. So the, he Craig stopped the car and got out of the car and ran because the engine was over revving, over revving and they couldn't shut it off. And I'm right there. I had just put the fire out inside the car. And now we're waiting to try to get the engine under control and hoping that fuel doesn't leak again so there would be another fire. If I hadn't put the fire out when I did, the car would have burned. Fun and games. And then this one here, this is the golden rod. Yes. And that's me right there pushing on the golden rod while we were working on the car. And those, this picture, and uh, this picture ended up in the same issue of Hot Rod Magazine in January or February, a year later. So. And this car went 606.601 miles an hour. And when I sat in the cockpit, that speedometer was still at 606.601. Yeah, right. And the cockpit was really tight because Craig's smaller than I am. But we got, I got in and we closed the lid. And I was in there for five or ten minutes, uh, soaking it up. <laughs> so it's been a, a lot of fun. Um, I've been wanting to build this for 58 years. So finally happened. So here we are. <laughs> so wow, 58 years in the making. Oh my goodness! But wow. What, what a story. Oh no kidding. About being part of the crew that ran this car and then having access to the car to get measurements off of it right and then building this scratch built model just and, awesome and having it here at the, the GSL anyway the GSL was just such a massive event and we've got a whole bunch uh, a whole bunch more shows uh, to cover all of this because there's just so much more to see so we will be getting back to the GSL absolutely Anyway, if, uh, if you're not a subscriber to the channel, please subscribe. And you might even want to consider being a member of the channel. Oh, yeah. You can click on the membership button and be sure to like the movie as well. But the easy way to become a subscriber, and of course that doesn't cost anything, it's just becoming a subscriber, is to click on the upcoming blue button. Zoink! Right there, the blue button. 
Well, we're not sure how you found this video on the internet. We hope you didn't find it boring, and we will see you here on Tuesday. See ya. With another story. Oh, bye yeah. bye. We'll see you. Bye. <laughs>